Hey everybody, it's Too Faced time today. We are talking about three of the biggest Too Faced holiday collections for their Christmas in New York uh, holiday 2016 collection. Too Faced is probably one of the first brands I was ever gifted a holiday item from, like way, way back when my sister got me like a gift set from Sephora. I remember it was like a little Too Faced music box and wow, have they expanded what they're putting out since that time. Your most expensive set this year is the chocolate shop. And all of these things come in a cute like outer box that coordinates with everything. But even once you lift that out, this is kind of the presentation of the palette. You've got a little lid up top, looks like a gift box. They really stayed with the total same format as they did last year. And to some people, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe you missed out. And now this year you'd like to have that same kind of item, or maybe you're totally bored and wish they did something different. But this is what the chocolate shop looks like when you open it up. There's this little place for your palette to sit, but it can be totally lifted out, and ultimately this is like your makeup palette. And then there's the little scene in the back, so you could have this open and use it as kind of a display item, or just take those little sample guys out and uh, close it all up, but you're getting a Too Faced Shadow Insurance, a Better Than Sex Mascara, and the melted lip color in here is one from the Melted Chocolate Collection. It's called Chocolate Milkshake. I am wearing that one. I love this shape. I actually already had this in the full size and I was so glad they were putting something other than Melted Peony in a <laughs> gift set here, so that's great. It's this pretty, like, kind of caramely nude. Love it. Every set that I'm going to mention is also going to come with a little booklet that's going to fold out and show you some different, like, look inspiration. So that was the Chocolate Shop, $58, Sephora only. Your next little thing is the Grand Hotel Cafe. I may have the little top switched around there. There you go. This one is $49. It's a available at both Ulta and Sephora. And last year, what did they call it? The Chateau or something? And it was the very similar little house-like design, which is no doubt cute, but they are kind of repeating that this year. It opens up like this. I took the palettes out so you could see what it actually looks like. You're getting a Better Than Sex mascara in there. That's your little added bonus. And now with the palettes inside, that's how that looks. They sit in there just like three little books. And this one is kind of geared toward, you know, keeping it all yourself or gifting it because because they all have little to from on the back of each palette. There's the eggnog latte palette. You're also getting the peppermint mocha palette there. You can see each one has a little different color scheme. And then the gingerbread cookie palette as well. And each one claims to kind of take on that same scent. Just like the chocolate shop was cocoa powder infused and had that sweet kind of chocolate soleil bronzer type scent. These, you know, while I can tell they are making an effort to do something different in each one, I wouldn't necessarily pick that out as being a gingerbread cookie, you know what I'm saying? The eggnog I kind of sense, the peppermint mocha, not so much. It's a very, very weak peppermint mocha, but I mean, they're pleasant. They're nice and it adds a little interesting twist. And then finally, your Ulta exclusive is $39. So we went 58 with the Sephora exclusive, 49 with that Grand Hotel little house looking thing, and then 39 now for the Mary Mac Maroons set. Oops. Just a size comparison from the big Sephora exclusive. This is the Ulta one. A lot smaller, but a very similar design in that you're going to take the top off and it opens up just like this. You've got a pretty little scene there. You got somebody doing some ice skating. There's your one extra that comes with this. It's the Better Than Sex mascara. You got a little macaroon stand, a little Christmas tree, very cute. Instead of being all out pink like the other one was, this is a little bit more of like a soft lilac color. And on the inside, you're getting 12 eyeshadows. They're larger than the shadows in the um, Chocolate Shop palette, but about the same size as what you're getting in your little trio of palettes. Truly, I feel like Too Faced nails the cuteness every year. This color scheme, this kind of pastel but still Christmassy color scheme really appeals to me. I think it's adorable. I think it looks nice in my room. Let's say you were gifting any one of these things to someone who especially maybe didn't have a ton of makeup or hasn't been collecting Too Faced holiday collections year after year. I think they'd open it up and be like, oh, you know, that's so cute. Now, for somebody who does keep up with these things year after year, there may be a little disappointment. 
I don't know, with this set and seeing how everything was formatted basically exactly the same, from the little display boxes to the one of them being shaped like a little house, I mean, it's all cute, but it really didn't change up too much from last year. I'm gonna be going through and showing you swatches. I'm gonna go from my least favorite set to my most favorite, and keep in mind, that's a personal opinion. You may have a different take on this, a different need than what I have, or just a different overall preference, and that's fine. I really try with my reviews to cater to, you know, well, some people might like this because of this reason, or some people might like that, but ultimately it is my review and I need to take ownership of it, and I'm giving you my personal opinions also, so just keep that in mind. My number three here is the Chocolate Shop palette, which is the Sephora exclusive, your most expensive one, $58, and the thing I'm going to be kind of gesturing with is basically the palette itself, although keep in mind there were a few extras with this, the shadow insurance, the mascara, and the lip product. But here's your overall palette. You're getting the three uh, face products, which I was pretty pleased with quality-wise. One is a highlight, one is chocolate soleil bronzer, and the other is this chocolate chocolate covered strawberry blush that's kind of a cool satiny finish and I'm wearing all of those products on my face today. Thought they all applied nicely, had decent pigmentation. I really thought that was adequate in terms of the extras. I am kind of wondering why they chose to place them on this side next to your darkest shadows and not over on the other side near the lighter shadows, but I'm sure there's a reason. A couple reasons why I'm putting this as my third place palette, and it's not because I totally dislike the palette or I think, oh gosh, it's a real dud. I don't feel that way, but I do think that the quality of the shadows is a little more hit and miss in this palette. Granted, it's harder to put out a larger palette where everything's got to be fantastic, you know what I'm saying? But as a whole, really with the entire Too Faced Holiday stuff, I love that their matte shadows are exactly what I hoped they would be. Too Faced makes really good matte shadows, and I think sometimes when you think Too Faced, you think of their more glitzy, like glittery shadows, maybe glittery fallout or whatever, but they make a great matte formula. I know if you have their natural matte palette, you are familiar with this. It's very soft, the shades are very smooth, they blend fantastically well on top of one another, and even in other palettes, whether it's the chocolate bar or peanut butter and jelly or whatever, any time where there are mattes sprinkled within their regular line of palettes, they've been turning out really well lately, and I have not been disappointed with the mattes in any of these holiday palettes either. If anything's questionable to me in some of these palettes, it's some of the shimmery shades. Now, if you recall the big palette from last year, there was a lot of sparkle happening in that one, and I feel like they've dialed it back a little bit here and made it more like some shimmery pops. Some are stronger than others, though. I have a little bit of a problem with the inconsistency that I see in the palette, but also, like, just looking at these couple rows right here, I think, gosh, that reminds me so much of, like, what's happening in the Chocolate Bar palette with these tones of brown, varying finishes of browns and golds. I mean, some people are gonna not have have any Too Faced stuff on their shelves at home and they're thinking, yes, this is where I want to jump in because it's giving me the most. But I know some of you out there who have been keeping up with the chocolate bar, the semi-sweet, the chocolate bonbons. If you are a collector of Too Faced palettes, I don't know that you're going to be doing backflips over this, just saying. But I will show you my swatches. I chose to do like the top half of the palette, then the bottom half, and you can see what I mean. The mattes are really strong. Most of what's in that upper half is kind of light to medium shades with the exception of that matte brown, and those mattes just work really well. Certain shimmers here and there, cookie dough I thought was kind of weak, ginger doodle, I mean I freaking love the names, but some of those were just a little bit flaky and harder to work with on the eyes, or just required a little more building up. And then getting into the bottom part of the palette, you've got more rich tones, more colorful tones overall. Matte shades once again did not disappoint, but honey dip I thought, there's a shade I've seen in other palettes, and I thought it was a little bit weak in here. Pound cake, especially flaky, and I was looking for those metallic shades that are rich, buttery, and just hang together wonderfully. Jingleberry, Too Faced likes to throw in a token purple, it seems like, into these holiday sets, and that one's pretty sheer. You definitely have to build that up. It would work best on top of a base. Sugar Bells, though, the metallic, like, silvery color really pops. Got a really nice, rich shade there with Huckleberry, and overall, you know, it's a palette that can totally be worked with. You've got mid-tone shades, transition shades shades, plenty of mattes to balance out some of these shimmers. I'm not trying to knock this palette overall, but for me, looking at the other things that I have, uh, that's why I'm kind of putting it in a third rung situation. Now second place for me was the Grand Hotel.
Hotel Cafe. This is your $49 product from um, both Ulta and Sephora. So we're dropping the price back by about 10 bucks here. And I think you're still getting a lot of product. You're getting some more generously sized shadows. I really like all three of the face products that are included within these sets. From a cuteness perspective, I think these individual palettes are just adorable. I really love the look and just the design on the outside. And I think when you're splitting it up into three, you do have more flexibility. What if you wanted to give a couple of these out to a friend? You could totally do that. And also just portability for yourself in general. You're going away for the weekend. Okay, I only want to take one. That's not a lot of space in your stuff. And then you've got a face product to work with as well as six pretty good sized eyeshadows. I'll go through each one, but the overall picture here I think is again really good matte shadows and a couple of hit and miss shimmery shades, but they're the kinds of shimmers where I feel like they're, they're kind of a wash of a really pretty sparkle, but they stand out so beautifully if you do a coordinating base underneath or maybe an even tackier type primer, like a glitter glue type primer, um, then those shades I think can really shine. So there's potential in pretty much everything in here, even though in dry swatches that I'm showing you here, they might not look as strong as they could possibly be. So first one we've got here, eggnog latte again. The scent is there. I can sense a little bit of eggnog, but this one is your neutral and a little bit greenish color scheme, and I do like this. I love my mattes in this palette. I love my central perk, that pretty emerald green. Couple of things to be aware of. Your eggnog latte is a little bit flaky, so that's that light shimmery golden color. It's not my favorite to work with, just putting that out there. Cold Brew is an example of one of those shades that can look gorgeous when it's catching the light, but it needs a little bit more more of a helper base to help that cling. Peach Cobbler, a very generously sized um, matte peach blush that's nicely pigmented. There's so much to work with in there. So as a whole, I do like this, but there's a couple of shades that need some special attention. Now Peppermint Mocha. Yep, this is my jam. These kinds of shades love that they've got a pretty like kind of rusty brownish color that's actually named Peppermint Mocha. Your mattes in Peppermint Cream and Candy Cane, those two light shades really perform well. They're bringing it with the mattes. Take a drink of your eggnog every time I compliment the mattes in these collections. Sprinkles is a pretty kind of metallic burgundy and then you've got coffee chip for a nice dark contrast color. Your blush in here, equally as good as the peach, I thought, it's called Santa Bay and it's more of a pink tone blush. Getting into your last palette, this is the Gingerbread Cookie. So cute on the outside. And this one is neutral, kind of like the first, but taking you more in a golden direction. Ginger Snap is killing it. That is a really bold metallic. Winter Dream is one of those that could benefit from a little bit richer base to stick to. But Black Coffee, that's a fantastic black. Ginger Cream, Maple Syrup, cannot complain about those. And then the face product you get here, is a bronzer. It's called Gingerbread, and it kind of reminds me of um, like the deeper tone in Too Faced Sun Bunny bronzer. I haven't swatched those actually side by side to see if it's an exact dupe, but it's got a little bit of a satiny finish there. So a little more glow to it on the skin than Chocolate Soleil. But I do really like this little set of three palettes. They're adorable, and anytime you split things up into threes, they're just more versatility. But my number one pick actually of these Too Faced Holiday palettes would be, I think, the best bargain of all of these two, and it's the Mary Macaroon set from Ulta. Again, this came in a downsized little box compared to the Chocolate Shop palette, and in there you got the extra mascara. But 39 bucks, and you're getting, I think, a really nice little palette of colors here. And this was the most consistent thing quality-wise out of anything I used. And they say this is vanilla scented. There's a little sweetness there. I, I think I am picking up on some vanilla with that. It's a little different from the chocolate bar scent you might know from different Too Faced products. But as I alluded to earlier, I think it can be easier for brands to pull off a consistent palette when there aren't quite as many shades in there that they have to nail. And I thought everything in here was really good. Obviously for the person who maybe isn't so concerned with all the cutesy stuff and isn't so concerned with having extra face products in the mix as well. The only extra you're getting with this is the little 
you know, travel size mascara. Otherwise, it's all about the shadow, but the mattes in here, really nice basics, like coconut. I love that there's a matte creamy shade. There are several really fantastic mid-tone mattes here, a nice dark brown, um, cookies and cream down here. That has some shimmer, but the shimmer really hangs in with that black shade. I love it. Now, this violet color, you might think, did I see that in the Chocolate Shop palette? The Chocolate Shop's color like this is a bit more pinky and more sheer. This one has more intensity. Honey Lavender I love. I think that's gorgeous. Praline, a little bit of a soft gold. So I find this palette to be very wearable for my neutral lovers out there. And I think it's just the most consistent with the quality. The mattes are great, but the shimmers are more consistent than I was seeing in any of the other palettes. They're smoother. Any shine in them really hangs together nicely. Added bonus, this color called Champagne Rose over here gorgeous highlight and it can go bold if you want it to. And as I've been, you know, thinking about my reviews and how I'm going to do them, I look at this and I think, well, it's not the most exciting palette. You know, I use that word sometimes, but it doesn't have like a ton of, you know, pops of color bouncing out at me here and there. But I think one of the reasons why I kind of like this is I think back to the Vegas Ney palette and it's got some similarities to that. I adored that collection and this is kind of like a similar take on it, I think. Also, one thing I want to mention here, I love the peanut butter and jelly palette. This one goes very warm. You're looking at the browns in here and they all go toward this really orangey brown. Um, put this up next to it. If you felt like these shades went a little too warm for you, this one cools it down a notch. You've still got, like, tiramisu I think is a nice warm brown, but overall things aren't quite as orangey as that peanut butter palette was. And my eye look today did come from this palette, and I've been very pleased with this and other looks that I've done, so I'll just walk you through it real quick. I primed my lids, I did a wash of coconut, that matte cream shade just everywhere, and then I used tiramisu, which is the light warm brown, just back and forth in my crease. I intensified it a little bit on the inner and outer corner with mint chocolate, which is kind of like a, I don't know, a little bit of a lilac taupe shade. And then I decided to pop Honey Lavender right in the center of my lid very intensely. I was pleased with the way this shade built up. And then I used Chocolate Raspberry, which is a gorgeous burgundy color. I patted that on my outer corner and my inner corner and worked that up into the crease just a little bit. So the pop of shine is really on the center of my lid. And then I applied some liner across the upper lash line. I did a brown in my lower inner rim and I continued under the lower lash line with more chocolate raspberry. And I guess what I'm trying to prove with this look is that you can still pull off something I think very festive and fun and a little bit smoky with this palette even though it's largely very safe neutrals. <laughs> but from the gifting perspective I think that can be a good thing. This has all the cute presentation that the other you know lift out palette had. A few fewer bells and whistles in terms of extras but if you want a nice quality consistent eyeshadow palette you're going to pay about 20 20 bucks less than you would at Sephora for the larger one, and I think this is great. So that's my roundup on the biggest Too Faced holiday things this year. If there are other smaller Too Faced holiday collections that you're interested in hearing me talk about, let me know. I think I mentioned this in another video, but I do still want to do, before it's all said and done for the holidays, I want to do a roundup of my top favorite holiday gift ideas. Will any of these appear in that video? I'm not sure yet. I've still got more things to try, but thank you for staying with me and watching these reviews. I'm so glad you enjoy them, and I'll see you next time. Bye.